today I want to take a look at demystifying vertex data. Um, before we jump into it, I will mention that I'm going to be talking about Simple Engine, uh, which is a new open source project that I'm working on. It's a game engine that I'm developing. You know, it's it's mostly for learning. It's mostly just for experimentation and education. Um, but I am going to be implementing libraries like BGFX. We're going to talk about that a little bit later. Uh, doing some model loading stuff. So why I'm mentioning this now is that right now I'm very much at the research stage. Um, you know, I have a little prototype working, and obviously I can render this cube. Not a big deal. Um, but I'm really, really digging into vertex data. Uh, how to optimize loading that mesh data because when you have a game engine when you bring in models you'll notice that there's always some sort of an import step the engine is doing something to that model and bringing it into the engine in an internal format uh, before it's used so anyways that's my quick little blurb about this I probably will do a full video about this later because I think this is its own interesting thing but today I want to talk about um, just good old vertex data and the way we're gonna do it is we're gonna look at the GLTF file format, and I'm also gonna show you a GLTF poster. So if you just Google GLTF, what the duck or whatever, this is kind of funny, um, you will get this poster, and just at a glance, you can quickly understand uh, how it works. Today, we're gonna look at meshes mostly, meshes, primitives, and then these properties, attributes uh, of a mesh, as well as the indices. What I really wanna get to and talk about is indexed drawing, where you have a bunch of vertices on a model and index drawing is trying to say, okay, are any of these vertices shared? And if they're shared, we're only going to send that vertex data to the GPU once, but we're going to give provide different indices where they're, where that data is shared on different faces. So this is really what I want to look at today. We're going to look at accessors and buffer views and stuff, but just in a simplified way. Okay, so let's say you have your plain old default cube here. Um, you've got six faces on it, right? And you've got four vertices per face. So naturally you probably only think there's eight vertices in the model, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, and you'd be right. Um, so what we can do to check that is we can go export GLTF. Um, we'll look at mesh data and for now, I'm just going to have all of these unchecked. We're not going to do any normals. We're not going to do anything. It's just the position. So there should just be eight vertices. So when we export this, um, pull it up in Notepad++, we see the mesh here, cube. Uh, we have attributes and then just position. We just have position attributes. So this tells us to go to accessor zero. If we go to the first accessor, we do see we have a count of eight. So that's eight vertices. The Component type here, 5126, is a float, and the type is VEC3, so, you know, XYZ components of the vector. So that all makes sense. We have eight vertices, they're vector threes, and they're floats. So, so far, so good. So where the complexity comes into, and this is where, you know, a lot of people get lost, is when you introduce normals. So in Blender, there's this fancy thing here called uh, display split normals, and it really helps with visualizing what's happening with the vertex data. So let's do this. If you go export, bring this up again, and then go into mesh. And if you add in the normals, here's what happens. Let's reload this. So when you add in the normals, we have now position, we have a normal attribute. And if you come down to your accessor, you see now we have 24, we have 24 vertices. So this is kind of interesting, right? Six face model. Uh, clearly there's only eight actual vertices positionally. But now we have 24 because the faces no longer share that vertex. If you look at these three faces, the GPU is going to have three different vertices for this point, just for this point. So what happens if we actually shade smooth? Um, shade, doing shade smooth, really all it is, let's go back to shade flat for a second. You have your three split normals uh, on each corner. And shade smooth is just averaging the normals, the split normals at that vertex. That's all it's doing. When that normal data is passed to the GPU, we're actually, the GPU is actually linearly interpolating um, in the fragment shader. You know, I'm, I'm speaking in OpenGL terms, but uh, it's linearly interpol interpolating those normal vectors to kind of create this curvature. So if you actually rotate this around, it almost looks like this is reflecting light like a sphere. That looks very weird, and this object does look weird for sure. Um, but what I want to show is that now that we have the normals smoothed, 
if we go to export, same data, so we're going to just have the normals come in here. You'll see now we're back down to eight. So hopefully that really um, makes sense, right? All these vertices are now sharing the exact same normal vector. So what we have packed in there is we're going to have, you know, three floats for position. And that's going to be here. So VEC3, 5126 is a float. And then three floats for the normal vector. And each vertex has a normal. Um, and now the indices are actually stored in this buffer. So this is a, this is a scalar buffer here. We're not going to worry about that too much. Uh, other than the fact that index drawing, we want to show, you know, at what point is it actually useful, right? So let's do a brief segue here and talk about, uh, normal bump textures, normal maps. Um, and why, why are they always this kind of blue shade? Well, if you think about your channels, RGB, uh, blue is the last channel and you should always think about these in terms of what's normalized to the face, right? So if you have a normal vector or sorry, a normal map on this face, then Z in blender space for sure is going to be up. And so that Z corresponds to blue. And that's why these things are mostly blue because the normal vector mostly points up out of the surface. Now you have an obvious problem here. If you're pointing out of another face, uh, let's say this one over here, then out is in the positive X direction. So now we have a problem we need to have the tangent, uh, it's called the, you know, tangent by tangent vectors to get you into this normal space that points out this way. So luckily for us, there is actually an export setting in GLTF that gives you your tangent vectors, right? So if you check tangents here, you export it, um, you come in here and we will see a tangent. Now the segue I want to do here is kind of to a little bit of shader programming. I don't want to go into it in too much detail, but basically, like we said, we have this normal map. It's not going to be in the correct face orientation uh, for all the faces on the model. So how do we fix that? So I do have a BGFX example here, um, example six, which is about bump textures. We can take a look at their shaders a little bit and see, see what they're doing. Um, so in here, bump.cpp, we can look at the layout and BGFX is a, is a really good abstraction layer. In my opinion, it, it brings things up to a point where you can read it. You don't get bogged down in the, you know, pipeline state details and all that stuff, but we have position. So that's three and it's a float, uh, normal, which is a unsigned integer eight and they're assigning four to it. Not entirely sure why I think it should be a three vector, but I'm, I might be missing something here, but in any case, right, we have, um, and maybe it, maybe the answer is down here, right? Encode normal RGBA. So they're encoding it into an RGBA uh, unsigned int for some reason. So maybe I have a little bit more to learn there. But in any case, they have position, normal, tangent, and the texture coordinates. So we'll get the texture coordinates in a bit. Um, but, so this is what we want to look at first, right? So we know they're passing position, normal, and tangent. So what are they doing in the actual shader? So if we go to their shaders, they have pretty simple shaders, vertex shader, fragment shader. Uh, and this is in, you know, BGFX's flavor of GLSL. Um, so what they're bringing in here, vertex shader, we have the position, normal tangent, text cord, exactly like we just saw. And they get it into world position. Um, you know, they're actually setting the vertex position there and world position, of course, not local position. And then we have the normal and the tangent. So it might go from zero to one, you multiply by two. So now it goes from zero to two, subtract one, and then it goes from minus one to one. So they're getting it into some different space. Um, and we know that they have those encoded as four vectors. So like I said, there's probably something I need to learn here, but the gist of it is this, right? They're going to get the normal, the tangent, they normalize those. They take the cross product of those two vectors. Uh, and really I should do a diagram or something that might be nicer, but you take the cross product of the normal and the tangent, if you're imagining those in your mind and you will get the bi tangent, right? You'll get the bi tangent. So then you have this TBN matrix. Um, and if you've ever taken a look at like learnopengl.com, they talk about the TBN matrix, but basically what it allows you to do, it allows you to take any normal map. It doesn't matter what normal map it is and apply it to the face, um, you know, the portion of this map that's going to be applied to some face, you can use that TBN matrix to point it in the right direction. So you can actually get the bump in that correct direction. Whereas before we could only get it in the top direction 
after using the TBN matrix, we can get it on the side. Okay, so all that to say, you know, we can export the tangent information, but you'll notice that it actually increases uh, our vertex count. So we, we went from eight and now we're at 14. So something has changed here a little bit. And once again, it has to do with the fact that not all of these are in the same tangent space. Um, and that's, you know, that, that can create, that's creating that extra data, right? Um, and the mathematical details of that, I don't want to go into too much, but you should recognize that now we're creating more, uh, more vertex data. So we're still less than 24, right? So the indices are doing something. We're having some sharing of index data. So that's good. We're still optimizing things somewhat, but when you introduce more information into the model, um, you're not optimizing the data that you're sending to the GPU as much. And we can't help that. Uh, we need the TBN uh, matrix in order to have normal maps point on the right you know, direction from each face. So let's do one more thing. Um, I wanna take a look at UV editing. If you look at this, the way the default cube is UV unwrapped is this uh, skybox kind of uh, unwrapping or cube unwrapping, whatever they call it. And you'll notice that some of the verts are shared, right? So if you look at this face and you look at this face, they are sharing this ver vertex in UV space. So let's go ahead and export and mesh and we'll change it to UV and hit export. So if we look at this now, the UVs that we just brought in, so we have text cord here, right? Text cord is in buffer two. Um, we take a look at buffer two and everything still has 14. So position 14, uh, normals 14, the UVs text cord has 14 and then the tangent has 14. So everything's still 14 vertices. So that didn't change anything, but I will show you this, the UV unwrapping actually does impact um, how things are mapped. So the problem we have now, so I just did a cube unwrapping and what you'll find is that if you click any one of these vertices, we get, I, I have the uh, sync selection on over here, UV sync selection. And if I click any one of the vertices, you'll see that the same vertex is not optimized. It's not being packed very optimally. This one vertex could have three different UV coordinates. So let's go ahead and export this. And you'll see now that we're back up to the full 24. So once again, the point of this video is not to say that indexed rendering is wrong. It's to point out that depending on how the model is constructed, it may be doing nothing, right? In this case where I have shade smooth on uh, and I'm exporting the tangent, the normal, uh, the UV chords, right? And obviously the position, it, the indexes, the indices are doing nothing here because the model has 24 verts in total, six times four faces, uh, six faces times four verts per face. But because of this other data that we're bringing in, you're not getting any uh, optimization there uh, in terms of you know the the index drawing part of it. So that's just what I wanted to talk about in this video. Um, for those of you who are into graphics programming, into C++, that kind of thing, uh, I encourage you to just you know chat with me in the comments. If I'm missing anything, please let me know. Uh, for my engine right now, I am looking into you know, mesh optimization. And I know there is the mesh optimizer library. Um, so I am looking at that, but I am trying to get a deeper and better understanding myself of how the vertex data works before I go ahead and integrate it into the engine. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you next time.